Before I talk about COVID, I just want to take a moment to talk about the Irving Shipyard situation um, that I'm sure everybody's aware of. Over the last four months, I've approved plans that have allowed essential workers to come into this province to do work that requires specialized skills. I've worked with each of those companies to draft very specific plans that follow public health protocols and ensure we have necessary COVID safety. In fact, I've said no to a number of plans. I've even turned around a plane uh, load of workers who were in the air uh, about to land in Nova Scotia because I couldn't approve the plan uh, because it didn't provide the right level of COVID safety. And then we then worked with the company to develop a proper protocol uh, and, and the work has moved ahead and it's gone very well. So there are cases where specialized skills are required and as long as proper public health protocol is developed in these cases, I will approve those. We do need to keep the economy going. I looked at the Irving situation with the same lens, but after a number of concerns were raised, I took a second look. And I realized I should not have approved the plan as it was. Even though safety requirements were part of my approval, uh, the meetings could have been done virtually. Uh, upon return, uh, the individuals involved can isolate at home and still manage to work. That's why I revoked my initial exception. Uh, and reverse that decision. Uh, the executives are now isolating at home and Irving has been fully cooperative. Uh, I will continue to make exceptions for specialized skilled labor and essential services. Um, I'll deal, these will be dealt with on a case by case basis and I, people, I want Nova Scotians to understand that the lens that I put on this is appropriate protection of, of your health and safety and I will only approve plans if the necessary COVID safety protocols are in place. I'll now provide a, an update on, on cases uh, in the last few days. Uh, our last briefing was on Monday. Since then, we've had, we had no new cases on Tuesday and a, a new case yesterday, and again, no new cases today. Yesterday's new case is a Nova Scotian who works in, in the movement of people and essential goods, uh, and he, that individual had tra re traveled outside of uh, Nova Scotia uh, before becoming ill, and that was the source of, sorry, they had traveled outside of Canada, and that was the source of their exposure outside of the country. So with one new, uh, we also have a new recovery uh, reported today, so we currently have four active cases of COVID-19 in Nova Scotia. As with the cases that we reported last week, uh, the, the two cases, the one from the weekend and the one uh, from yesterday, uh, our contact tracing has uh, found minimal numbers of uh, people with identified as close contacts. So that's good news for all of us. Uh, to date, we, in Nova Scotia, we now have had 1,066 cases of COVID-19. Uh, 56,227 uh, people have been tested with negative results. Uh, we've had 63 deaths. We continue to have uh, no uh, long-term care homes in Nova Scotia with active COVID-19, which, uh, which is, uh, is good news. And again, uh, as of Tuesday, the, the COVID-19 outbreak in Northwood, uh, we're able to declare that over. Uh, yesterday, the, the, our, our microbiology laboratory at the QE2 Health Sciences Center tested 398 uh, uh, individuals. So I want to inc still encourage anybody who uh, feels unwell to do, to do the 811 online assessment and if you're directed for testing uh, and go forward and get tested. It's important that we still have a low threshold or testing anybody who might have symptoms suggested of COVID and, and we continue to have access to testing through 811. We have testing sites open around the province and we have lots of capacity in our, in our laboratory. I want to move on to talk about masks. There's a lot of discussion about masks, uh, a very, a very uh, a topic that a lot of people have an interest in. Uh, continue to look at our approach based on the uh, av evidence available. Uh, we continue to have conversations uh, amongst the chief medical officers of health at a national level. In fact, we have a call, have a call this afternoon and it's, we're having a, a, a masks uh, as, as part of the agenda. I want to thank Nova Scotians who are following the, strong, the recommendation from public health, which is a strong recommendation to wear a non-medical mask. If you're, if you're in situations when you're around other people and the physical distancing cannot 
uh, be maintained or you're not certain that it can be maintained. So those are often situations if you're in a, a store, um, if you're uh, in an elevator, if you're on a bus, uh, even if you're in an outdoor gathering with lots of people around. Those are all cir circumstances that we re strongly recommend that people uh, have a mask. So we, we re encourage everybody to always have a mask with them and if necessary you can uh, put on the mask. We need to make it a habit, uh, as I said, to always have a mask with us. So every time we go out the door, we should, like we grab our wallet and our car keys or our purse, uh, we should have a mask with us uh, and wear it in those environments. Like when we go in, before we enter stores, before we get on the bus, uh, put on a mask because uh, we don't, in those environments where we can't be guaranteed that we're going to be able to keep six feet apart from each other. It's a way we keep each other safe by each of us wearing a mask. It's one piece of uh, masking is, is one piece of our, our, our efforts around uh, controlling the spread of, of COVID-19. It's important that people understand that masks are part of a package that I've been talking about. So we need to think about if, if, if we're not feeling well, we need to stay home and not go out and about. We need to maintain the, the, the distance of six feet or more uh, wherever possible, but in circumstances where we can't be assured of that, everybody wearing a non-medical mask. We need to continue to practice uh, you know, good frequent hand washing, uh, cough etiquette, coughing into the, into, this, into the sleeve, into the crook of your elbow, uh, frequent cleaning of, of surfaces where hands go. Uh, all those pieces together, as I've said before, those are the tools, that collective package of tools that we have. If each of us does those well, we minimize the chance of, even, we, even when we get COVID-19 in the province, we, we, we minimize the chance of it being able to spread broadly our communities. So it's everybody doing those personal protective measures and in the health system and public health maintaining the capacity for easy access to testing, a low threshold for testing, uh, all the capacities and then having public rapid public health follow-up of all the cases. That is what we need to continue to focus on uh, moving forward. Those are the tools we have to uh, control COVID-19.